Okay, so tonight we're honored to have a man from the Northland Club come down and give us a demo, uh, add a little spice to our life, <laughs> literally. And uh, everybody give a hand for Chip. Hey, tonight I'm going to turn an upside down salt shaker. This is not a new concept. They found these in history from way back. And uh, one of the things about it, you know, if you go to a diner, often they put rice in the salt to keep the moisture. Well, they found these, you don't need to do that. Since it's sitting down on the table all the time, it doesn't tend to draw the moisture that normal salt shakers do. So that's our project for the day. Feel free to give it a shake there, but uh, you will get salt out of it if you do. <laughs> and don't throw it over your shoulder. <laughs> it depends on who's sitting behind you, you know. And of course, I didn't get a pencil, just that would have been too wise. Hmm. How's that work? I don't know, you're going to tell us. No, too well. <laughs> <laughs> I would be happy to tell you. We don't have a whiteboard here, though, do we? No. Oh, shoot. You used to. You used to? There's something back, you know, back there on the floor. Can we hold it up and draw on it? It'll be back. Just not tonight. Okay. All right. Chucky. Well, I was going to draw out what makes this work. Now I'm starting with the block here. Um, I'm not sure exactly what size it is. It's not a uh, full three by three, but it's uh, in the neighborhood. Let's see, I'm gonna read it right here. Two and a half, two and a half inch block. There's only one critical measurement in this entire project. And I'll have to share that secret with you later. Maybe if we find a whiteboard. I'm a whiteboard with no marker. Got a whiteboard? <laughs> oh no! Oh, here. Here we go. Big piece of paper. That will work. Okay. Wow. All right. That's the easy one you got there. It just doesn't matter. We can do anything. So what makes this work, we're going we're gonna to have our salt shaker here. It doesn't look anything like that because I can't draw. Okay? And we're going to bore a hole in here. Now, I don't usually use the F word when I do demonstrations, but I must say it. Fostner bit. I'm going to use a Fostner bit. And then we're going to dome this area up here. Then we're going to come back and put an insert in here. It's going to be a little natural funnel, so when you go to fill the salt, you just pour it in the funnel, turn it upside down, pour it in the funnel, the salt fills in, and when you shake it, there'll be a hole through here, obviously, as you saw. When you shake it, the little granules will bounce off this dome towards that hole, and they'll come out for you. Does that make sense? And the only critical measurement is the distance between this dome and that little hole. And that should be one half inch. Everything else is free form, whatever shape you want to come up with. <laughs> I guess I should tighten this down again just for, it can't go anywhere. But we'll just make sure it doesn't try.
good place for it. That's a cantankerous one now, isn't it? Everybody understands why I had that problem? So when I started in, I got in a hurry, and I started with my tool a little bit open, right? This is closed, and the further open you get, the more aggressive your cut. Well, when I started my cut, I started a little bit open. If you start a little bit open, that tool grabs, slides backwards on you. So if I would have been totally closed, as I should have been, I wouldn't have had that problem. But the bigger problem is, once you do it, and you have that little place established, it doesn't like to be very forgiving about it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you just got to turn away that little place. So I'm going to smooth this out right here because I got a little place I don't like. And then let's flip this around, put it in the chuck. It'll be much safer then. My key right there in my magic spot. I left it. No, did I go too small? No, not quite. All right. So that's going to give me much more holding power than uh, I made my taper just a little bit long on it, but it'll work for what we're doing. slide. I want to turn it on before I set the point so I know it's in the center. like it might be just a hair off but it probably crush some fibers when I tighten that down so we'll just chew that up not that it's important or critical we're going to turn it all the way anyway right. my end I'll chew it up of course I'm hung over the tool rest now so good chance I'll get a little vibration We'll just take a real gentle cut. And what am I going to do when I start this time? I'm going to be closed, right? About the outside edge right now, but I'm eh, a little bit. I could I could do better than that. Okay. All right. Just check my bottom. I'm good and flat. So, just going to lay things out here, get an idea where I'm going. So I need to keep some material up here, 
say right about there. Now you know you can always turn the lathe on to make your mark here. But if the lathe's turning forward, there's a good chance it's going to break your pencil lead off if it's not very smooth wood. But if you just put the lathe in reverse, then when you uh, put your pencil up there and turn it on, you have no problems. back up. We're just going to kind of get an idea of a rough shape. We're not going to spend a lot of time shaping right now. We'll turn around and do that here in a few minutes. But mostly I want this end down here complete. I want it to be I'm not going to be able to get back to it when we turn the rest to shape. Okay. That's going to be up against my chuck when we're really turning the shape. And hopefully I left myself plenty of material here. If not, we'll make a shorter one. We may even take some more off there before we're done. So, get this kind of out of our way. Pull this out. And we'll go ahead and drill that. Now, a friend of mine in Colorado went to visit him, and he's been making a lot of pepper mills. And he turned me on to these portion of bits. Uh, where am I? There. And you can see they look a little different. They've got grooves in them. So there's not as much surface area to touch the wood to... Here, I'll pass one around. There's not as much surface material touching the wood so they don't heat up like a, a normal portion of it does. And... Uh, What's the brand? It's F-A-M-A-G. And even though I don't have one large enough to do what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I really want an inch and a half. I'm going to go ahead and drill it out inch and three eighths here. Just because I can drill much faster with this. Also, if you have an air compressor, instead of pulling your bit out every time you want to... Uh, Instead of pulling your bit out every time you want to clear it, you can just follow behind with your air compressor. I'm creeping again, aren't I? have had an air compressor and been blowing out behind this bit. You don't have to pull it out and blow it out and put it back in, right? Where did you get them? I ordered these online. I got these from uh, that company in um, Columbia, Taylor Tool Works. Taylor, yeah. Mm -hmm. Taylor Tool? Yeah. They sell them on Amazon. They do. Now there's, there's three different types they sell. The uh, Number one, or A, I don't remember which it is, has a round shank, and I didn't want that because I know that frequently things twist, right? This has the octagon shank, and then the number three, or the C, um, it's all carbide, so it's very expensive, so I didn't think I needed that one either. So even though I want a hole of 
inch and a half. I went ahead and removed that material with the inch and three eighths just so it's faster. And now this bit doesn't have to do nearly as much work. Let's see where I'm at here. Yep, about the same place. Now this bit I am going to slow down a little bit for. Just because it's not designed to run so fast. And I don't have my center reference point any longer. Okay, that's not going to work. There's only so much quill. <laughs> that wasn't a first for you? No. Okay, so what I'm making is this piece next, but I have to make a place for that to sit inside there, right? Now, if you're making one of these at home and you put that in and you say, whoops, I didn't glue it. Chip, would you hold it over your work? Oh, absolutely. If you just hit it with the air compressor, this piece will pop back out. Okay. Uh huh. And then you put the glue in. But that's uh, that's the magic piece that makes it all work. I don't know if you wanna. You got it. I can get it. All right. So we're gonna make a little uh, place now. For that to sit. It doesn't look like it would give you much salt, but it, it does. This zone is as big as you make them? Yeah, zone? yeah. You could make it a little bigger. A little deeper, I guess, what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, it was uh, Dennis Liggett who I first saw do this. And when he did it, he talked about putting that dome in there. But then he forgot to do it. So he says, it's all right. That little hole from the Froshner bit will be plenty. I don't know if that's true, or if he just didn't want to go back in there and do it again. Okay, so I'm going to come up in here and make that little dome. I'm going to raise this up just a smidge, since it's a scraper. Get that nub in the middle right, so you have to come in below it and come up into it. But luckily, we're going to glue a bottom on there, nobody ever going to see that, right? Just a smidge more. I got the center out all right, but not a very even dome from there. Okay, that'll work. How deep are you back in there? About two inches? About two and a half. Two and a half? Yeah. 
And that's a good point. We need to measure that because we need to know how long to make that stem, don't we? Uh, yeah, right at two and a half. So that means a half inch is the magic number. We're going to make our stem be two inches. Okay. That's from the base. Of the, I'm sorry. That's from the base of the funnel. That's from the tip of the funnel, the top of the funnel, to the dome, over it, right? So it's. No, I mean the length. The length, of the length is two and a half to the dome. So we're going to make our our nub two inches, so it gives a half inch in between. Okay. Oh, that'll work nicely, won't it? Okay, so we got to remember our two and a half inches on the insides right about here. We got lots of room to do whatever we want to do up here. And all this shaping can really be done when we reverse it, as long as we have this shaped first, right? So, as long as we're pleased with this shape, everything else we can do later. Just want to try to keep that constant curve. Okay, I got a place right there I didn't get round. I'm going to speed things up a bit for this. Up that cut just a little bit early, didn't I? All right, if we touch it with sandpaper, nobody will know. But I know, and that's the biggest problem. Okay, and then up here, we'll put the little knob to hold on to it. All right. Okay, it kind of gives us a rough idea of where we're going. As long as we know where we're going, we can get there. Okay. So that tells me I need to part it off right about here. Catch. Got a little tight around the edge there, didn't I? So we'll come back to that. We're going to get our bottom going here, so we need that to be this diameter. 
which I could actually set a set of tires and that would get me closer faster, wouldn't it? And that is should be a hair over inch and a half. A little more than a hair, eighth inch on each side, so almost three quarter. I think I should have sharpened this tool before I came. are we? Uh, I got a long ways to go. Did I not tighten my calipers down? Did I slip? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Bottom side, slip out. That's why we always measure twice, right? bevel it and then if I get to the point where I know that the very end fits like that now I can just come back and make the whole thing that same Now that was supposed to work and make me look good. Ah. Ah. I'm gonna put you to sleep before I get there and that. That is almost too loose, but that's that's why they make glue, right? We gotta glue this in anyway. Yeah. Don't have to worry about an air compressor. That's right. <laughs> So, yeah, and I'm just trying to judge how deep this is, which I could, you know, do something crazy like measure. Oh. I know, I know. It's, it's not always in the male vocabulary, but. Uh, okay, so now I've got to make the inside right below that small enough to fit in my inch and a half hole. Just a smidge under inch and a half. There. I always use a flat parting tool, and that's the price you pay for using a flat parting tool, right? You go so deep, friction on both sides, things heat up, they swell. So you have to come in, then you have to move over 64th of an inch, 
and make parallel cuts. But you get a much smoother finish. I mean, this is nothing to, to write home about, but it is a smoother finish than I would have gotten with a diamond parting tool. Okay, so now we'll do some shaping. And the first thing we'll do is we'll cut that funnel out of the center there. before we make the stem too thin. I'm just approaching this like I'd hollow a box or anything else. Just get my bevel somewhere to ride, come around the corner, and come straight down in there. Come over with a little smaller tool, and I can get the bottom of that finished up a little nicer. It's not beautiful, but it'll work. Okay. So now I kind of have to keep tabs on how deep I am there. And I didn't go as deep as I could have, but I did go. Around in there. We'll just keep that handy. And all of this is just material to be removed now, right? Had just a little more room, I came in with a roughing it out. Now there's nothing critical here about removing material, but the more I remove, the more salt the salt shaker will hold, right? My tool rest moved just a smidge. Now overall we wanted this to be two inches, didn't we? So I better check and see where I'm at. Two inches. I need a little bit of, of uh, material up here by my chuck. So let's go ahead and get this thinned out.
So I'm getting hung out here, so it's going to talk to me a little bit. I'm shooting for, I don't know, half inch or thereabouts. But I better get finished over here because it's just going to vibrate, right? Not if I held on to it, it would suppress the vibration a little. what I do. I was a little bit open one night. The tool cut's far more efficient when that's open. So when you get in a hurry, it's natural to hold it open because you're trying to be efficient. But, and look right there, we're at two inches. All right. <clears throat> and my hole in the center, yeah, it's good enough. If I leave a little nub in the center there, then the drill bit wants to wander off center. Come back on here. I'm used to that number three more stapled homework. I can get my big fat finger in there. All right, we're going to go with an eighth inch drill bit. Now, you can make that hole smaller if you don't want quite as much salt, right? So if, if you're trying to watch the salt in your diet, nothing says that hole can't be smaller than that. And then I've seen these made for pepper. And of course, then you'd want the hole a little bit smaller as well. It's my understanding that they used to keep all kinds of spices in a container much like this. What's that now? where you've got a flat, yep. small end. <coughs> I've seen it where they've cupped out. Oh, where they cup it out so it draws more in. Right. Yeah, absolutely. The size of that hole depends on what kind of salt you're going to use too, don't it? Well, yeah, if you're going to use that big salt. If you're going to use the sea salt. Sea salt. <laughs> versus... Yep. Yeah, it wants to go right around that hole. It does not want to go in the center. Start it real slow and gentle. There it is. Now it's in the center. tool. There we go. We went through. Okay. So yeah, you would want to Take that nub off of there, wouldn't you? Let's see, how do we do? If it goes in this way, oh, we made our, we're a little tall, we're a little tall. We really need to, bring, oh, and I'm a little big there. So I'm gonna have to dress it up a little bit. But that's all right, we have that technology, we can do that. <clears throat> Where are you? 
you. All right. What's that? Came prepared for that. Yeah. Well, that's what we're going to use to uh, finish our our mill too. So we could easily put this in here and fuss with it, and we may do that. But watching the clock, let's shape this first because that's far more important. Pop. What's that? Pop. Pop, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's been known to happen. Bring up a little extra support if we wanted. I've got a nub right there. Oh, I got a divot right there. Because I broke it off, right? I should have uh, cut it proud of where I wanted it to be if I really wanted that to be a finished piece of the work. Hmm. Why did that happen? And what did I do with my check key? Did this pull it off? Eh, we're gonna go with it. This probably pulled it off. A yeah, that pulls it off. So we'll just be Careful to make lighter cuts and not worry about it. How's that? What's your speed now? Uh, about 1700 RPM. And this knob, we want it to be a little smaller than the body anyway. place there and looking at the body I'm still gonna make this a little bit smaller Did I get past it okay we can live with that. And we got lots of material here. So we can actually bring this up a little more. Of course, you can fuss with it until the cows come home, right?
Bobby. I saw you, you did it too. You gotta turn your head sideways to see it, right? I know, I know, I did it. <laughs> Just a little belly to that curve right there. Clean this up down here. And now you know why I didn't want to cut down here, right? I wanted that finish cut first. Okay. Let's clean this up for a second. Just smaller tool so I can get in deeper. And if I was, would have pulled out a small skew, I would uh, go in there even deeper, which I probably should do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can take a small skew, I can get way down in that van. All right, see what I'm doing. So we give the illusion that those two are separate pieces. down and we'll just bump up there and kiss that so we can take that off the sandpaper okay I need to do to this. I made that piece a little too long and the bottom there just a little too big. So let me pass that around while I fix this and then we'll see how good I am if it fits. You want this to fit it with before passing it around? No? Nah. Okay. I just need the depth of it. Which I know I'm about twice as much as I need. So now it's just a matter of turning it uh, with that thin stem. That tool rest, the one gets in the way of the other, doesn't it? I guess we go that way, it doesn't. Okay, who's got it? <laughs> See if that fits in it now. See if this fits in it? See if that fits in it now. Okay. Yeah, you need to clean up that little top nub there with the uh, pocket knife. Right. Sir? You, you made this one concave on the bottom. And the other one was, was more flat. Uh, do you find a difference in, what's the difference? I was in a hurry when I did the other one because I did that for a demonstration oh, too. <laughs> so the, the concave was better because the particles of salt will bounce off at an angle and should come closer to the center there. 
Oh, oh go ahead. Does it fit? Then you, then you hold your perfect, then you get store it sitting up and then you hold the top and then the way. No, no, no. You, you store it this way so the moisture can't get into it. So it's always sitting on the table this way. Yeah. And when you want salt, you just give it a shake and the salt comes out. Right, it goes up, it hits that dome, it bounces off that dome at an angle, and it comes towards that hole in the center of that piece we made. Yeah, tell them how you fill it. You just uh, turn it upside down and pour your salt in, and it goes right down the hole. <laughs> Now what have you got sitting there with the finial on top? Of the uh, that's, that's just a pepper grinder. I made the match it. Yeah, and nobody had uh, educated me too much on pepper mills when I ordered it. And I got a bunch of them that were a little too short. When I went with the measurement, I didn't realize they were including the head and the stem as well. I should have ordered uh, about an inch and a half longer. And then after I made it, my buddy's like, well, let me show you how to fix it. So I kept this one for myself because it's, it's defective. <laughs> it doesn't hold as much pepper. So now I know you can buy that aluminum rod, you can make your own. Sir? Well, if, if, the, if you load it by pouring it upside down and pouring it down in the eighth inch uh -huh. hole, uh, then you set it back up and then nothing falls out, of course, because it's all below the It's the It's stem. that stem, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all sitting down here. You, know, you can glue that thing in. You do glue it in, and yes. Yes, this one is glued in. It's glued in, you can't get it out. Exactly. Now, if your wife tries to wash it, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Did you put any finish on the inside of it? No, I do not put a finish. So, I do recommend you use a, a wood that's pretty inert, right? You wouldn't want to use anything that might transfer that flavor, or any of those oily tropical woods, <laughs> anything like that. I even stay away from walnut because I don't buy I mean, you could use walnut, but if I did walnut, I would sand it and put a little something in there. No oily wood. I would not use an oily wood because I'm afraid it would, the salt would absorb the oil. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then with pepper, you could go ahead and grind up a pound of it and load it every time too. There you go. Absolutely. But it's easier just to get a pepper mill and, and make a match in. Oh. <laughs> you can, if you turn that thing on sideways rather than going up and down, you can get it down without salt coming out, right? You can get it down. <coughs> Set it down without any salt coming out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you guys. I always enjoy coming up here. Coming down here from where I come from. <laughs>